Hi, my name is Taylor Erfling. I'm a first semester nursing student. Um, today is April 6th and it is about 1045. I, today I'm going to be performing oral and oral pharyngeal suctioning on a patient. Um, first, I'm going to go in and assess my client for the need for suctioning. Um, then I am going to gather my equipment. I have a towel, some lubricant. For my oral suctioning, I have a yang cower, and for my oral pharyngeal, I have a catheter tip and clean gloves. So I'm going to uh, perform hand hygiene, go in and introduce myself to the client, um, identify them with two identifiers, and explain what I'm going to be doing. Um, I am going to turn on the wall suctioning to 80 to 120 millimeters of mercury. Uh, after performing hand hygiene, I'm going to don my gloves and I'm going to test the wall suctioning. And it's working just fine. I'm going to provide privacy. Um, I will perform hand hygiene and get a new pair of gloves at this point. Now that I know that everything is functioning and working, I'm going to begin suctioning. I place a towel up here and then I'm going to begin with oral suctioning first. I'm going to connect it and then I'm going to lubricate the tip and then I'm going to go in alongside the teeth, the mouth, and just perform oral suctioning. All right, for oral pharyngeal suctioning, I'm going to need a catheter. I would have new gloves for this procedure. I'm going to attach it. Then I'm going to lubricate the tip. I can pull some of the lubricant up, some of the water up. Make sure it's working right. Then I'm going to insert down to the oral pharynx about three to four inches and apply intermittent suctioning as I'm pulling back. Insert again, three to four inches, intermittent suctioning as I pull out, not as you're going in. After that's completed, I would remove it, throw away the catheter, uh, remove my gloves, perform hand hygiene, assess the patient throughout the procedure, and document all relevant data. Thank you. My name is Taylor Erfling. Today um, I'm going to be performing nasopharyngeal suctioning. It is April 6th and about 11.50 in the morning. First, I am going to go in and assess my client for the need for suctioning. Um, after I've determined that they need suctioning, I'm going to assemble my equipment. I have a sterile suction catheter tray, a towel, and I have clean gloves in the room. Um, next, I am going to go in, introduce myself to the client, explain the procedure, what's going on, and why they're getting it done. I'm going to set them up into a um, semi-fowler's position. I'm going to turn on the suction in the room to 80 to 120 millimeters of mercury. And then I'm going to don clean gloves after performing hand hygiene. I'm just going to check the suction. Now that that's good, I'm going to provide patient privacy. Um, in this case, they are in a private room and the door is closed. Now that I performed hand hygiene again, I'm going to open my sterile kit. I'm going to open it away from me. Take out my sterile gloves. To make sure not to touch on the inside one inch order. Can't go past that. All right. I'm going to don my non-dominant hand first. Then being mindful of my thumb. Put on my next glove. move this out of my way. I'm going to prepare my kit now. 
opening up my lubricant and getting my catheter out. I'm going to wrap this up in my dominant hand. Well, first I'm actually going to measure. So I'm going to measure from the nose to the ear, mark it, and then from the ear down to the neck. That's about right here. Now I'm going to gather it up in my dominant hand, and I'm going to use my non-dominant hand and break sterility just with this hand to connect it. Okay, I'm going to occlude this, make sure that it's working properly. I'll aspirate a little bit of the fluid just to double check, lubricate the tip. And then I'm going to insert the tube along the floor of the nasal cavity. I'm not using suction at this time. And perform intermittent suctioning while rotating. It'll be every, for about 10 to 15 seconds until it goes comes out. After that is completed, I'm going to disconnect the tubing. I'm going to remove it in my gloves and throw it away. Perform hand hygiene and assess the client for how they went through the procedure and document all relevant data. Hi, my name is Taylor Erfling. I'm a first semester nursing student. Today is April 6th. It's about 12.10 in the afternoon and I'm going to be performing endotracheal suctioning today. First, I'm going to assess my client for the need for suctioning, then I'm going to assemble my equipment. I have a sterile suction catheter kit, clean gloves, um, a towel if need be, and um, goggles and gown if necessary. So, then I'm going to go into the patient's room. I'm going to introduce myself. Um, I'm going to identify the patient with two identifiers, explain the procedure and why we're doing it, I'm going to provide for patient privacy, and I'm going to put them up into a semi fowler's position. Then, I'm going to turn on the um, suctioning to 80 to 120 millimeters of mercury, perform hand hygiene, and then don my gloves. I am going to hyperoxygenate the patient. Test the suction, make sure it's working. It is. I'm going to remove my gloves, perform hand hygiene, and then I'm going to open my sterile kit. I'm going to open it away from me. I'm going to remove my sterile gloves, and then I'm going to apply them. There's a one inch border on the out on the inside that I can touch. You need to make sure not to go past that. I'm going to glove my non-dominant hand first. Make sure I only touch the inside one inch border. Then, being mindful of my thumb, I'm going to don my dominant hand. Okay. I'm going to move this out of the way. Then I'm going to set up my sterile field, open my lubricant, and get my catheter out. Okay. I'm going to gather this tubing in my dominant hand. I'm going to bring this a little bit closer. To me, making sure I'm still touching the inside of the sterile field. Um, now I'm going to break sterile field with my left hand to apply the catheter. I'm going to test. I'm going to lubricate this and test it for suctioning by aspirating a little bit. It's working good. I'm going to use my non-dominant hand to remove any oxygen source. And then I'm going to guide this 
inside the tube without using suction, about 12 and a half centimeters or five inches, or until the client starts coughing. Then I'm gonna remove it one to two centimeters. And then I'm going to perform suctioning intermittently, 10 to 15 seconds while rotating, until it comes back out. I'm going to assess the need for repeating. Um, in this case, it doesn't need to be repeated, but if I did, I would wait 30 seconds to one minute, and I would not perform the procedure for more than five minutes to prevent him from becoming too deoxygenated. Then I'm going to remove this, wrap it in my glove, and dispose of it. I'm gonna perform hand hygiene, reapply any oxygen, and restore it back to its normal settings. Um, I'm going to get the client and the patient in a comfortable position and assess their toleration of the procedure, and then I'm going to document.